And there's two parts to this critical problem. But one of them was that I know that was uh, that you can use it and let it dry out and put it away in a cupboard somewhere. And as long as you build the correct circuits to run with it, you'll be able to make a light light so so that you have some form of light. And if you build the oscillator efficient enough, you'll be able to light up the kitchen table with a little electricity with a couple of drops of water. So how we're going to do this We're going to take this copper, we're going to heat it up, and we're going to turn the outside to copper oxide, which I'll use as the green. That's going to be black. And we're going to take the inside and turn it to corpus copper. It's going to be red in color. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to put this little layer on here with the heat on this. We're going to use this hot plate to let the copper in the air turn black. Then we're going to dump it in this. And all you girls should know this. Or We're going to clean it off. Okay, then we're going to use a pickling compound called Elm. Want to pass it around? Elm. Go ahead and pass it around. We've got a bag of it in here. Two bags. <laughs> we're going to form the crystal with that. And by making a semiconductive piece of copper you know it's getting hot so. <laughs> okay we want we want a one-way diode is what we want because we don't want to let anything back we just want it to go one way so we're going to put Paper towel in here on this on this semiconductive material, which is also photosensitive. It would be an easy way to make a photo cell with salt water, but you're not going to get very much current out of it. It's going to be really inefficient. But in this situation, it's going to be real efficient. So we want a one-way diode. And we want it going want to go in that direction. This way. Then what we want to do, we want to develop an electrical circuit for it that can take advantage of it. And everybody's familiar with garden lights, aren't you? You know what they are? The sun shines on them all day long. And in about three weeks, you throw them out. <laughs> that's really familiar because that's money. Right? That keeps costing you over and over and over. And when you think your garden light's gonna light up on the night that you want it, guess what happens? You find out the battery can't take the charge during the day because it's totally sulfated up and it's grown dendrites in the NICAD and you have to either take and bang that battery or try to pop those things loose so that it will charge during the day. So, what we want is a battery and if we do enough of these batteries we can run all kinds of things. And what we want to do is, when we need this battery, 
we want to be able to just use a little bit of moisture and run this solid state circuit and have it light what you want. So, people have said to me, now do we all know what this is so far? It's the copper, we're going to change it, we're going to make it semi-conductive, we're going to clean it off in the borax. So don't run away when you see the steam. Now, we need a circuit. We need a practical circuit that will allow us some efficiency to be able to light these super bright LEDs. And then what we need is some way to get a ring of these bright LEDs so that if we didn't have any light, we had a few drops of water, and if we needed to read something, we could read. That's where this comes in. It's just one experimental LED. And of course, we'll have to turn the lights off to use this. But at that point in time, you'll understand why I said a circle of LEDs. So, let's just take I have to really waste some time while that heats up because it's <laughs> really inefficient to just go there. So, so I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change my technology. I'm going to use every bit of my technology for every piece of equipment that I want to build. Now, I explained yesterday the SG circuit. Okay. Everybody knows it's got a bi Fowler one coil, is that right? Yeah. Okay. So, we know that one of these coils, when the SG fires, have, is out of phase and one's in phase. And then it flips around and does the other thing. So, all that we need is some resistance and some drive <coughs> of this. And we call this a four-speed SG oscillator. And then all we need to do is put the LED between here and the ground. Now, from the patent that we filed under chargers that, that charge your battery in the moonlight, it's running the SG oscillator. It's been on the internet. Unfortunately, I pulled all the information because a few people who were given items took them apart after signing papers with me and then posted what the circuits were. So no more information ever got out from me. So unless I give you the information and say, okay, you can do what you want with it, I don't expect you to give it up. Anyway, this is for your information and I expect you to do something with it or at least experiment with it, so you have some form of emergency lighting that doesn't require much at all. And I don't care if you light your whole backyard up with it. I hope you do. But the nice thing about this is if you build the correct system, the rain comes along and waters it for you, and it just keeps going. So that's what we're interested in. So we want to use the SG circuit and we want to talk about how to get more LEDs on here at the same brightness. Now Chuck, do we have an array? Okay. 